My name is Sebastian Rotella. I'm an author and a senior reporter at ProPublica, which is a news organization that does investigative journalism in the public interest, and it's a pleasure to be here. I just got back from a reporting trip to Europe, and I can tell you that I really am impressed at how timely and pertinent uh, this, uh, this event is. Um, so we're going to start by introducing uh, Professor Helmut Norputh, who is in the political science department at Stony Brook University, where he has taught since 1979. He holds an MA and PhD in political science from the University of Michigan, my alma mater. He has also taught at, uh, at the universities of Texas, Cologne, Germany, and Essex, England. He has been a visiting professor at the universities of Arizona, Mannheim, Germany, and Barcelona, Spain. He has assisted the New York Times with its election night analysis from 1984 to 2012 and has served as a polling analyst for the Foreign Policy Association. I'm not going to read the titles of all of his books, but his most recent one is The American Voter Revisited in 2008. And he has a forthcoming book on President Franklin D. Roosevelt entitled Commander-in-Chief, Franklin Roosevelt and the American People. And I'll save the best for last. Uh, I was informed by Professor Mignone that uh, Professor Norputh, in fact, predicted the victory of Donald Trump uh, early on, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a pleasure to welcome him. Thank you very much. Should I wear this? Uh... Thank you very much for this kind introduction, and uh, thank you very much, Maria, for inviting me to make a presentation at uh, this conference on populism. I have to make a confession, though, right away. I'm no expert on populism. I've uh, never really written anything about that with that uh, word in the title or, or, or anywhere, and I think as you sort of spoiled the suspense. All I really know about Donald Trump is that uh, uh, about a year ago, I primed my prediction formula for the presidential race uh, this year outtopped Donald Trump. So uh, uh, what do I know about what populism had to do with that? For how long you have predicted the victories of the presidents? How many years? How many years? Since when? Uh, 19, Since when? 1996. Uh, all right. Well, no, we have to get the details. So I guess for me, uh, to, make, to make any kind of a contribution to your conference is to see whether there's anything in uh, the uh, electoral success of Donald Trump, first in the primaries and then in the general election, that has anything to do with populism. So I will uh, we'll leave it up to you when I show you some measures of uh, what people thought about him or why they voted in a certain way, whether you think this is a sign of populism or not, or how much populism may have anything to do with that. So, well, over that. Uh, my forecast, a uh, lot of people thought it was uh, uh, outlandish, ludicrous, delusional, uh, sticking to it. Uh, and everybody thought I'd be wrong. Now, just, just a little bit of a backup. My, one of my main predictors is what's happening in primaries. And uh, that might be a little far-fetched. In particular, this one primary, the New Hampshire primary, which uh, comes first, has come first for about uh, the last uh, 60, 70 years. Uh, and uh, a lot of people think it's uh, quite, a, uh, quite an omen for what's going to happen, uh, not only in the nomination, but in the general election. And I've taken full advantage of that in making these predictions since uh, uh, 96. So not always just, just on New Hampshire. And I've cheated a little bit by adding one more uh, in 2016. So. Um, Let's go right to it. This is from uh, the exit poll in New Hampshire, uh, where people were asked, why did you, uh, well, uh, no, they didn't say why, they, 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 they asked who you voted for, okay, that's, uh, that's uh, used on election night to, to, to project it, and then they ask a few questions. I thought I'd come right to it, that's something we haven't really talked about much in, in the discussion of populism, and that is clearly something that uh, defined Donald Trump almost from the start. I think when he made that uh, rather uh, offensive statement to a lot of people about Mexicans coming to this country being murderous, rapists, etc., not the best that this country could give us, it put him right up the front of the peak, uh, the, the, the heap of uh, candidates. And uh, 
So, uh, how do people feel about uh, some of the things that you said about immigration, for example? Uh, uh, should they be offered a chance to apply for legal status, or should they be deported? Uh, well, Donald Trump probably would be leaning more toward the deportation than toward the chance of uh, uh, legal status. It's very clear that half the people who voted for Donald Trump in New Hampshire in that first primary uh, preferred a position that we would clearly associate uh, uh, with Trump on immigration, and that probably some people would say is sort of a form of populism, uh, an, an appeal to maybe uh, the less noble instincts of the public, uh, resentments, uh, uh, anxiety, etc. cetera. Uh, it's, it's quite striking. You really feel, you, you really see in a poll like, like this where the vote for a particular candidate is so strongly associated with a particular position. Uh, that, that's, that's, not, that's not normal. Not, you don't find anything else in the exit poll where you see any other candidate who uh, has support so much from a group of people with a particular opinion. Uh, they didn't actually ask a lot of things about, I mean, there are so many others, like, I mean, what kind of other position did Christie take that you could ask like this, or Ben Carson, or Jeb Bush, et cetera. And uh, uh, so uh, it's very striking that you get that high percentage. On the other hand, it's also interesting to note that Donald Trump also leads among, at least he's tied with John Kasich, among the people who are a little bit more uh, tolerant. Okay, so yes, he has support from a group that, 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 that shares that particular view, but it's not the only thing. So if, if he had just that, uh, he might have done pretty well, but he wouldn't have been uh, so much at, at, at the top. So in a sense, he leads uh, all the rest too. All right, so that's about immigration. Uh, what about Muslims? All right, a Muslim ban. Um, here too, uh, he's clearly the favorite among those that want to take a hard line that they either heard that he said that or somehow know that, that, that that's something he would do, 44%. And uh, on this, he does not have uh, 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 a kind of a lot of support among the people who oppose it. And this is really a a very uh, widespread opinion. I mean, this is 64% uh, of uh, people who voted in New Hampshire who were re Republicans, registered Republicans, and independents, which uh, New Hampshire, as you may know, can decide in one primary or the, or the other to, to, to take uh, part. So, yes, on, on um, what to do about, about um, immigrants, probably partic primarily uh, from Mexico or South America. And on Muslims, we, we do see uh, signs that uh, Donald Trump's support is clearly motivated by uh, those, those those kind of sentiments, and well, call it populism or call it something else. Um, all right, now it puts this a little bit in, in perspective. Uh, uh, the exit poll asked what was sort of the most important question uh, uh, issue for for you in deciding. Uh, people might have an opinion about something, like, like what to do about Muslims and, and immigration, but, well, maybe it's not the biggest deal. They have other worries. And what we see right here is that uh, 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 immigration, I, I don't know whether you can see those numbers, they're pretty, pretty, pretty uh, faint, uh, was really not the most important issue for these New Hampshire voters, but actually the fourth most important, least important of uh, uh, several others. Uh, government spending, terrorism, economy, jobs, which might have sort of a populist streak as well, depending on what people uh, have to say about it. It puts a little bit in perspective the, the maybe the, the strong uh, point that, 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 that immigration makes about uh, Trump's support, that there were other issues. And the important thing is Trump is the favorite, regardless of what issue you, you find is important. So he's sort of really... Not a single issue candidate, uh, just immigration, Mexican or Muslims. Uh, he's really sort of like an all-service, full-service candidate uh, for, for all the other issues, too. Uh, and he really, I mean, hardly anybody comes, comes close to him on, on that. Like, he's, uh, that's interesting, too, that uh, he's not just sort of, sort of in a corner with one issue and that's it. If he were, if he were just sort of like the, the kind of uh, maybe caricature of populist who just, just, just harps about immigration and Muslims, uh, 
I doubt whether he would uh, have uh, won the New Hampshire primary been on top. So yes, it helps him, it puts him on the map, but he has to be broader in his appeal to win the support in a state like this, and that's that's pretty typical for uh, many other states that he uh, uh, that he uh, he, uh, he carried as well. Uh, all right, so uh, okay, one more thing. Um, if you, uh, these exit polls always ask about uh, other than uh, issues, <coughs> what kind of things are very important to you in terms of the candidate uh, qualities, the personality uh, characteristics. Uh, these kind of options vary. Uh, I don't think uh, they had tells it like it is in 2012 or 2008. So sometimes, I mean, they, they sort of, sort of uh, improvise to capture something that, that seems to be uh, uh, quite characteristic for one. So it's very clear that uh, on uh, tells it like it is, uh, Trump uh, beats everybody hands down. Some people love that about him. He speaks his mind. Uh, that's, that's what uh, 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 leads people to, to him. Uh, bring change. He's a change, the candidate of change, which is uh, uh, pretty important to a lot of people. Uh, can win in November. Uh, he said too. She has my values, not so much. All right. He is an item where uh, some people have maybe uh, should have maybe some doubts, like Christian conservatives. I mean, Donald Trump is not really uh, sort of their kind of lifestyle and, and etc. So here. Uh, some of the other people, like Ted Cruz and Ian Casey, are clearly uh, 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 way ahead of Trump. So one of the few items where, where Trump is not is, is, is not leading. But I'm not, I don't know if that's populist and tells it like it is. I mean, that they take a known story about uh, political correctness and all that. Uh, maybe people uh, have caught on to that, that Trump is that kind of a person who doesn't, doesn't mind sort of maybe Offending people, saying saying things they're not they're not supposed to say. Uh, uh, so overall, I would say yes, there are elements of uh, populism in the uh, support for Donald Trump. But at the same time, you also get a feeling that if that was all, if populism was the whole, the only thing, uh, he might not have gotten very far. So he has some other uh, strength as well that. Uh, that put him ahead of a very large field, as you know. I mean, he had uh, seven, 16 or 17 other people that are going to fit all on, the, on one page there, because not some of them just didn't get very much support. So the uh, display uh, didn't even didn't even miss them. Um, all right, now uh, let me go on to the uh, to the general election uh, and um, pick up on a predictor that I that I used to. Uh, Make uh, make a forecast, and uh, what that sort of tells us about the support for Donald Trump board comes from, and, and, and how it sort of sort of fits in. Uh, uh, there's a very striking regularity in American presidential elections uh, that many of you have maybe seen anyway or heard about, etc. Or I mean, just following a few, it's, it's just hard to miss. Uh, that is that after one term, which is not just a situation that we had, uh, the presidential party typically wins. So this was uh, Obama uh, in, uh, uh, in 2012, it was Bush in 2004, Clinton in 96. Uh, so in a way, I was lucky because I made my first forecast, it was 1996, Bill Clinton uh, said uh, against all laws, Bill Clinton will win re-election, although a lot of people at that time didn't think it was very likely, but in the end, first term president. Uh, as you said, Jimmy Carter is really the, the Incredible exception. People don't realize how much of an exception he is in failing to win re-election after one term when he defeated the sitting president, which uh, is, is something that also, I mean, Gerald Ford, two, two, two years in office, etc. Now, on the other hand, after two terms, which is the situation that we had in in 2016, Obama, uh, what you see is mostly uh, a loss for the White House party, which means. The Democratic Party, Obama's party, uh, Hillary Clinton's party. So it's maybe not just so much a problem that uh, that uh, she has. Uh, so uh, very one exception, 1998, uh, Bush the elder uh, follows Ronald Reagan with a uh, a, a third term. Uh, so there there is something about I would say the timing of uh, Donald Trump uh, doing it. 
running in 2016. It's almost, over the last 50 years, probably the only election, I think, uh, where he had a, a theoretical chance of winning. Most of the others, he either wouldn't have had a chance or he would have had to, to tangle with the sitting president of his own party, which uh, is very risky if that president is reasonably popular. So I have to say one thing about Donald Trump. He has a good sense of timing. Uh, this is a picture for the whole uh, almost 200 years of American elections, and you can see a definite cycle in presidential election going back and forth, back and forth, about, I don't know, nine, ten cycle. And you can clearly see that 2016, after 2012, the trajectory, this is the Democratic support. Anytime you're above 50, the Democrats win, below the Democrats lose. So the Democrats were on a downward trajectory. And to put some numbers on that, I have a mathematical formula to, to do that. Uh, this is way before uh, we ever heard of Donald Trump running uh, for election in 2016. I, I posted that in 2014, uh, that the Republicans were favored to win the next election by that percentage. Chances uh, a little bit over 60% of winning that. So Donald Trump picked the perfect year. So if, uh, uh, an open competition for the Republican nomination. Yes? This is Electoral College or popular vote? Popular vote, popular vote. Exactly. <coughs> uh, all right, so um, uh, something was in the air about 2016, uh, whether it was Donald Trump or some other Republican that uh, put the Democrats in a hole and put the Republicans up, and uh, so Donald Trump is, is the one who's uh, in a position to take advantage. So now, uh, I'm looking at the exit poll from the uh, uh, general election from November, and what I thought I'd do is to uh, uh, pick a state, one of, the, one of the states, one of the six states that Donald Trump flipped uh, in the election. Uh, three were very, un very unpredictable. Nobody predicted that Donald Trump would win Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan and Wisconsin. I don't think, I mean, I, I have no state predictions. I have made no predictions about, 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 about these states. Uh, almost no poll, pre-election poll, uh, had Donald Trump in the lead in those states. So every, so uh, this was a total, total shock to uh, any observer that uh, uh, Donald Trump would be able to capture these states. Pennsylvania captured by, a, in the end, a pretty good margin, 50,000 votes roughly. Uh, Wisconsin a little bit less, Michigan a little bit less. Also overlooked in, in the focus on those three states, uh, Donald Trump also uh, flipped uh, uh, Ohio. Uh, the, 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 the swing is almost 10 points. I mean, it's not small potatoes. I mean, Ohio, Obama won very comfortably, and uh, Trump won very comfortably by, I don't know, something like six, seven points. Uh, uh, and he did the same thing in Florida, a little bit closer, uh, and Iowa. Iowa is a strange story, Iowa. I don't know what's going on in Iowa. I think it's one of the widest swings from one to the other. So there, there are about uh, at least six, I think, six states that, that Donald Trump needed to flip to win in the Electoral College on election day. So this is a, a, a look at some of the states that, that Donald Trump flipped. So I, I settled on Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, this is from the exit poll in Pennsylvania. So here's a state that, that uh, Donald Trump wins. And uh, so uh, some of the items that uh, pertain to his candidacy <coughs> on immigration, this is uh, similar to the, to the, to the, to the uh, New Hampshire exit poll. I think maybe even the same question. Okay, legal status for immigrants uh, or deport them to their home country. And uh, you can see that Donald Trump is the overwhelming choice of those people who favor uh, a hardline deportation. So that's populism, and he's cashing in on, 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 on that. Uh, he loses uh, very handily the ones that want to offer legal status. So, okay, all right, Donald Trump, you. Uh, uh, this, is, this is certainly to, to your advantage. Uh, this is about. The economy, which we heard a lot about, so they they uh, they asked the question: whether uh, international trade uh, creates U.S. jobs or takes jobs away? U.S. jobs away. Uh, Pennsylvania is clearly a state 
in which there's a lot of anxiety about international trade, uh, taking jobs away, whether that's correct or not. I mean, that's, that's somebody else to, to decide. The voters believe, the voters of Pennsylvania believe that international trade was hurting them, and you can see that Donald Trump gets two-thirds of those votes, and this is the majority in Pennsylvania. Uh, so a state like that, uh, Hillary Clinton probably didn't see that coming, although she I mean, should have, somebody should have, should have warned her about that, and uh, tried to do something, whatever you know, she could have said, tried, or, or done, but, but clearly here you have a very clear sign, and uh, well, that populism, <laughs> Uh, takes advantage of that. So on sort of the two key issues on the economy, uh, on immigration, uh, the Trump support sort of aligns with uh, uh, maybe what populism would lead us to expect. The federal government, uh, this animosity toward uh, the, the federal government, 24% of Pennsylvanians check angry. I mean, really put these things in polls like, are you angry? You said you like, dislike, favorable, unfavorable, but here, angry, dissatisfied. They actually had one called enthusiastic, but I left that out because there were not enough people to, <laughs> to uh, this, this, would, this would be up here. So I think 4% checked enthusiastic, but the exit poll said not available. They couldn't break, they don't break it down below a certain number of people. But, okay. Uh, so, uh, yes. The people who are angry, the angry, I don't, know, I don't know, they're all angry white males, but that's the category of voters uh, in the old days, the angry white male type, who uh, uh, sort of the type of voter we should take notice. So yes, I mean, they had, they had it in for the, for the federal government. Even the satisfied, he gets, he gets most of them. Very, I mean, minority is satisfied. So something about the, the, the federal government uh, 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 struck Pennsylvania voters says uh, uh, it's not very, very, uh, uh, very nice. Um, here, I don't know the, as it relates to populism, uh, the future. Uh, uh, be optimistic or pessimistic about the, about the future. Interestingly enough, uh, I mean, all things said and done, uh, jobs going away, uh, immigrants coming in, and even if you don't want, still maybe more people feel a little bit more optimistic than pessimistic, maybe that's the American ethos, we have to be optimistic, right? Uh, those, those people clearly stick with, uh, with, with Hillary, those that are the pessimists who don't think it's going to get worse, the country is going down the drain, etc. Uh, we need somebody to drain the swamp or whatever Trump was saying, I can clearly see 71% uh, go, go to him, so anti-federal government uh, sentiment which uh, uh, I don't know, might, might probably benefit some other Republicans too, because that's, that's sort of very standard, standard Republican uh, 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 rhetoric. Um, all right, candidate equality. What kind of things matter uh, to you most? They, they, didn't, uh, they didn't list in the exit poll, tells them like it is. I don't know why they left it out. Uh, but uh, clearly, uh, can, can, can bring about change, number one, uh, for voters in the general election. Uh, uh, it clearly beats experience. That's my early title, my working title for my 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 paper. Uh, uh, change Trump's experience. Well, let me play on word on Trump. This is, I mean, all these tables that I've shown you right here for Pennsylvania, they're almost identical to the tables you would get for Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio. They're not just unique. I mean, it's very, very similar to. Uh, states that uh, that uh, uh, Trump is winning, and uh, so if you want change, if you're looking for a candidate who p promises change, 83% of those uh, went for Trump. That's probably the single biggest uh, contributor if you sort of uh, compare it to, to everything else. Uh, Hillary clearly is the candidate of experience. Yes, you want experience? Uh, she's a candidate. You stick with her. But only 21% uh, were interested in experience in, in, in Pennsylvania in that election. Good judgment, okay, we might add that to it. Uh, she's doing, doing, uh, doing, doing pretty well. Uh, so, in a way, it's sort of an election contest between what do you want? You want change? How do you want somebody who's experienced that can keep the country going the way it's been, been, been going for a while and 
really Trump is the uh, took advantage of uh, for the sentiment for uh, uh, for for uh, change. So uh, yeah, depending on your definition of populism, uh, uh, there are clearly some elements that uh, that Trump is storing up there. Uh, some are a little bit maybe, I mean, too vague, like change. I mean, you don't have to be populist to want change, perhaps. Uh, but I would also say that uh, uh, if he, Trump had just run as a narrow populist, just only on that, uh, my feeling is that he probably would not have gotten the nomination, and he probably would not have won, won the election. He had to offer a little bit more broader picture, and, and in the end, what you see, I don't have the numbers for that, uh, but you can look it up, is that uh, he managed to consolidate the party that he almost sort of took over in a hostile takeover, uh, the Republican Party, Republicans in the end, contrary to a lot of uh, sort of uh, expectations, fears, and hopes, uh, came through for him in the end. Republican voters voted for him in as high a number as Democrats voted for Hillary Clinton. So there was no massive defection of, of Republicans who just couldn't stomach Trump and voted for uh, either a third party candidate like uh, Johnson Stein, I don't know, not, 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 not Stein, uh, or even dare to, to defect and cross the aisle to, to Hillary. There was nothing of that. So Trump lined them up, they came through for him, and uh, many of them probably, I mean, didn't do it because he was actually very populist, but because he was a good Republican. Okay, thank you. Maybe I, should, maybe I should say that for a Q&A. Huh? Huh? Okay. 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 No, we hear a lot these days. Okay. 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 We hear a lot these days about article after article. Now Trump is the worst president in, in the first 100 uh, days. Lowest approval rating ever. I mean, record low. Not just, I mean, by, by a little bit. Just terrible. Uh, almost looks like, well, he's not going to make it uh, through, through one term. Well, here's a poll that uh, had all this headline oh. in, in uh, a Washington ABC poll. It came out, th came out mm -hmm. this week. Way, way, way down in the bottom of the story. Down, down, they said, well, okay, asked how you would vote if you had to do it over again. Okay, here's the answer. Okay, yeah. Trump 43, Hillary Clinton 40. Even yeah, as bad as he looks yeah. right now, Hillary might not be able to beat him if she had if she had a do-over, et cetera. So, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.